Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomix. This time I will show you how to perform electrostatic analysis in Prepomix. You may wonder how it's possible because there's no explicit mention of this type of analysis in Prepomix documentation or interface. So the idea here is that if we go to Calculix users manual, you can see within the types of analysis there is electromagnetism section and here you can select electrostatic calculations. As you can see, this can be performed as a special case of thermal calculations and there's a reference to the dedicated uh, section. And here from those um, equations and uh, theory behind uh, this procedure, you may find out uh, that there's the direct analogy between uh, steady state heat transfer uh, analysis and uh, electrostatics. So basically you can use the steady state um, heat transfer step and uh, define um, everything as if it was a thermal analysis, but in fact um, it can be also treated as electric analysis using all, all the analogies between the different uh, properties, uh, fields uh, and, and so on. Here you can see in this table uh, the equivalence for some of those um, variables. So uh, let's go back to uh, Prepomex and uh, here I will create a new model. This time it will be 2D plane strain and because I'm analyzing uh, two dimensional case, one that can be simplified this way. And uh, this time I will not choose the default unit system with millimeters, but I will rather select the one with meters. And that's because um, it's much easier to operate with electrical uh, units using the standard unit system with meters. Uh, it will be less confusing and uh, less risky when it comes to potential uh, mistakes. So let's uh, choose this unit system and now I'll import the uh, geometry. The geometry is very simple here. As you can see, it's just um, a surface consisting of uh, four segments. But um, this is just for meshing. I will uh, create a compound part after, out of this. And now I have a single part with those um, face uh, partitions. So I will create a mesh. Uh, I will define the meshing parameters. Uh, so I will just change the uh, maximum uh, element size. And uh, I will also uh, disable the second order um, elements because I, in, th in this case I need uh, first order elements for this kind of calculation. Uh, this is uh, enough to, to get uh, good results. And uh, then I will also uh, create uh, another uh, mesh setup item, which is shell gmesh. And uh, here I will define a simple recombination to get uh, quad elements. And thanks to those partitions, I will get nicely shaped quad elements using the uh, transfinite algorithm. So if I click create mesh, I will get a nicely shaped um, mesh of linear elements. So now let's hide the mesh and I will proceed with the rest of the definition. I can also make sure because we are using different units and usually even though we created the geometry in FreeCAD, exported um, standard way to step. Uh, so we can make sure that the size of the geometry is correct. So we can use the distance tool and for example measure this distance here. It should be five millimeters uh, and you can see uh, that um, it's correct here. Another way would be to uh, look at the scale down here. You can of course resize your model and uh, fit it into this uh, scale, see if it's uh, correct according to, to what you want to achieve. So once we uh, check that, uh, we can uh, proceed with the rest of the definition of the model. Uh, so um, first of all, let's create a new material. Uh, it will be air because um, basically um, I should also tell you that we are analyzing concentric cylinders. So we want to calculate the, their capacitance. I can already show you uh, what it looks like. So this is the, the actual case that we are solving. And the geometry that we are using is the blue part. This is the air between the, the two cylinders. Um, we are not modeling the, the cylinders themselves. Uh, they will be represented by boundary conditions. We are modeling the, the air between them and we will calculate the, the capacitance this way. So and this is uh, how we are going to proceed in this case. So um, the material is air and we only need to define one property, which is thermal conductivity. But in fact, uh, it corresponds to um, electric permittivity. So this is the actually permittivity instead of conductivity. It's equivalent and we define the uh, value uh, like uh, this. So you can see also in the calcpad sheet that uh, we have um, relative permittivity and uh, we have the um, actual permittivity uh, calculated here. And this is what we enter uh, in uh, Prepomex. Uh, this is vacuum permittivity. So um, if we and go back to Prepomex, we have the right uh, value specified. Um, and don't um, 
be suggested by the, by the units here. They are, of course, meant for thermal calculations, but in this case, um, those are not the, the actual units we are using. Uh, you can see the actual units in, in calcpad sheet. So uh, let's confirm that. I will create a new section, solid section, and uh, one meter is exactly the uh, value that I want to uh, use in this case. So I will leave the, the, the default setting. And now I just need to define a step. Uh, this will be, as I said, uh, heat transfer step. It has to be steady state, and this corresponds to electrostatics. Um, so I'll leave the default settings here. And then, of course, I need to specify boundary conditions and loads. And when it comes to boundary conditions, um, I will use temperature boundary condition, which in this case is again not uh, temperature, but actually it's uh, electric potential. So um, when I leave the zero degrees Celsius value here, actually it's zero uh, volts. So um, this is the, the difference here. And uh, then I also define load, and this will be uh, actually I can maybe rename this because it says temperature. And instead, I can, for example, say that it's voltage uh, and uh, the uh, value is mm, zero, so I can uh, name it like this. And now, mm, for the outer boundary, I will define load, and it will be surface flux. And again, it's not a heat flux, but in fact, it's a surface charge. So uh, it will be uh, something else uh, based on the, on the analogy. So I will show you the value that we are going to apply. This is the outer uh, charge and it's in coulombs per meter squared. And this is the, the value that we are going to apply in this case with uh, also a negative sign. So I'll specify the sign and the value that we are going to uh, use for this um, charge. And also I will rename it to uh, something like uh, uh, Q uh, outer and just like um, in a calcpad sheet to, to make it more uh, clear. And as I said, it's not uh, we're not interested in heat flux here, but it's rather charge density or, or surface um, electric charge. So we can um, confirm this, and uh, now we have uh, everything defined. So we can run the analysis. Of course, it will be very fast because we have a very small um, problem here, small mesh. So we can just run it and um, check the results and, of course, compare them with uh, CalcPad uh, sheet. So let's uh, run the analysis uh, and uh, we can already uh, see the results. Here they are. And again, uh, using the analogy, we have uh, what we have here is not actually temperature. At least um, that's not uh, what we are looking for here. But uh, the, the field uh, is it's a voltage, so we can uh, find the number here and what we are looking for is uh, actually maybe i should uh, delete it for now and uh, here we are looking for uh, the dif voltage difference um, so we can just uh, because of because here in the on, on the on the inner surface we have uh, zero volts uh, so uh, we don't need to um, subtract anything we can just look uh, at the value um, on the outer boundary and uh, as you can see it's in minus 9.158 uh, and if we enter this uh, right here in 9158 uh, we get the um, capacitance value from the simulation so um, this is um, the charge uh, in coulombs that we applied divided by um, dif difference in, in voltage uh, so we have uh, this result uh, in farads and uh, we can compare it with theoretically calculated uh, capacitance which happens to be uh, actually exactly uh, the same uh, so uh, we have this is per meter but um, the, the um, length is actually one meter so uh, it comes down to the same, but as you can see, we have um, the same, exactly the same value obtained uh, from this uh, analytical calculation based on just the uh, dimensions of, of, the, um, of the of the system and uh, permittivity. And then, if, if we compare it with the value obtained from the simulation, uh, from 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 the result of voltage uh, drop. Uh, we get the, uh, exactly the, the value that we are expecting expecting here. So uh, this way we can confirm that the calculation is uh, correct. All right, uh, that's it for this performance tutorial. Uh, I hope it was interesting, uh, something different. Uh, I guess uh, many of you didn't know it's possible to perform this kind of calculations in, in Prepomax and using Calculex. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, uh, feel free to ask any questions and uh, suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.